Disney Infinity is a game that features everything you love about Disney. It's packed with all of its characters, its cast, its storylines, but the irony here is that Disney Infinity is really about you. It's a toy box dumped onto your living room floor, brought to life by imagination, both yours and Disney's. Disney Infinity Starter Kit comes with three playsets. A playset brings with it two meticulously detailed plastic figures. These aren't just little statues, we're talking about finely detailed things. In game, the playsets deliver two sorts of content a player themed open world packed with a campaign and quests, and new items for use in the game's player created toy box worlds. The starter kit only has one character from each set, so if you want to play with a child or friend, you're going to have to plunk down some cash for new toys before you even get started. Having to pay extra for co-op is a bit of a bummer because that's where the experience is, especially if you're a parent who wants to play with their kids. This is one of the best experiences I've had playing video games with my son. It's just a shame that that's not supported out of the box without you having to pay that extra cash. New playsets don't just bring new settings, characters, and items. They also include new mechanics. Pirates of the Caribbean, for instance, introduces sword play and ship battles. Monster University delivers pranks, and The Incredibles brings superpowers and melee combat. Each of these playset campaigns took my son and I four to five hours to play through. In Pirates of the Caribbean, the most amazing thing was ship-to-ship -ship battles. One of you takes control of the ship, while the other one takes control of the cannons. My son and I had to work in concert. My son took control of the ship, navigating through the water, while I sink the ships. In The Incredibles, you take charge of The Incredibles. That means you have superpowers, but unfortunately it doesn't mean you can fly. What you can do, though, is run from rooftop to rooftop and do lots and lots of climbing. It's a lot of fun initially, but after a while it does get a little old, and, and frankly the people you're going up against are a little repetitive. Monsters University was my biggest surprise in the game. The idea in this game is that you're at university learning how to scare other creatures, and you can do that in the game, but you can also set up these really cool pranks. The pranks include things like being able to set up fake kiosks that will smack your character across the screen, or spring them into the air. The thing that made it fun wasn't just springing these traps on AI, but setting them up when my son wasn't looking, and then watching him run into them and see the surprise on his face as his character is catapulted across the screen and into a wall. The novelty of all the new things to do or see offered by each additional playset is undermined by their lack of depth. There's not a lot of story here, and frankly, after you get through the rather short campaign, going back and replaying some of those missions is a little boring. I do have hopes, though. Think of this as a console launch. Sometimes those first few games aren't very good, but they get a lot better. Hopefully the same will be true for Disney Infinity and those future playsets. The toy box in Disney Infinity is a blank slate, a massive field designed to be filled by your imagination or preloaded with the creations that come with the game. It is the most significant element of the game, the most fun, and certainly the best reason to buy Disney Infinity. Only the game prevents you from really digging into it, and I don't just mean initially. Even after nearly 20 hours of playing, beating three campaigns and then some, I still can't access the best bits of the toy box. You're gonna have to do adventures, you're gonna have to beat up enemies, and, and sure, that's fun initially, but eventually you kinda get sick of doing that. Every time you do it, you start to build up experience, which gives you these points. Those points are then used to earn you spins, and those spins are then used to give you random toys out of the toy box. It's all a very convoluted and frustrating experience, at least as an adult. It turns out my son loved it. Personally, I'm more of one of those guys who just wants to get everything instantly. But with my son, it's all about the gamble of maybe getting what you want or maybe getting something you don't. To me, what makes this so frustrating is that with the exception of those locked away items, Disney Infinity's Toy Box is an amazingly fun experience. The Toy Box manages to strike the perfect balance between user and developer generated content, giving gamers a place to create that is so full of distraction that the line between playing and creating is completely blurred. Disney Infinity is a wonderful game that mashes together the best of collectibles, cherished childhood memories of playing with games, and Minecraft-esque creation into one beautiful package, and then it locks it up behind an aggravatingly vague system of luck and grinding. The game doesn't quite nail those moments of carefree child's play found in every real-world toy box, but it gets closer than any other game I've ever played.